Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. In this video, we are looking at part three of applying bark to a bark mixture to a wire armature tree. If you have not seen part one or part two, you should go check them out. If you have forgotten some of the things I mentioned at the intro of part one, here is a brief summary to uh, curb some comments that I've already addressed or questions. And you can pause the video here if you want to read them all. And with that intro, brief as it is, a rarity for me, let's take a look at how I finished up this process and the results that I got. You know, doing the undersides, worrying about them, may seem a little like who's going to see it. And that might be true. But, but I always intend to have a piece viewable up close, real close. And from all angles, I think having the viewer get down to model height and see things is an important part of the experience. So I expect some of the undersides of the tree to be viewable. And so I really just need to just make sure there aren't any there, like really gross, <laughs> gross spirals visible. because. The foliage will set on top of the branches. And so if, depending on where I place it in the display and how close viewers can get to it, will affect how easy it is for them to look up at the underside of the tree. Because I have not planned this display as well as I should at this point, uh, I'm not exactly sure whether I need to be careful with these kinds of areas. So. I'm just going to be careful with these areas. All right, so this area that I've been working on is still slumping a little bit. Um, maybe two slightly thinner layers would make a tiny bit less work, uh, but I am, I'll be honest, I'm a little tired of working on the bark. I'd like to get past it, so I maybe get a little, a little eager to just cover up that area. And where the bark is thickest is where it will slump the most, it has the most mass, and that will exert the most force. So right now I'm going to let that skin over a little bit more and then do some more pushing. The last thing I want to do is, and you can see here, this tree's got, uh, you know, a little bit of a bend, which I, I intended, but now the area up above the trunk is quite a bit thicker in some regards, uh, this area should be m much heavier than the area above, or at least equal to it. And right now, depending on your angle of view, it can look a little bit smaller, actually. So I am going to add some more material down there, similar to what I've been doing above this branch. And then I think I will be done and ready for texturing. In fact, I know I will be because I won't let myself go back <laughs> to the upper areas. Uh, like I said, some of that's going to get hidden. Some of this is learning. And at this point, uh, I did uh, go in and add some more material uh, to the base of the tree. Uh, I haven't bulked it up really as much as I would have liked, uh, but I'm calling it at some point. And I have started working on texturing the bark. And I started uh, by doing some testing. I won't show you the test, but uh, just to indicate. Um, and I was doing some, uh, trying to stipple it, and then I did a little sanding. Uh, these were some ideas I took from uh, Mr. Gravitt's book, but I really wasn't liking the effect that I was getting. So I did a little more testing, and I have come to the conclusion that for at least for right now, the best method was to add quite a bit more plaster. I mean, not a ton, but enough that it's really now holding a very stiff peak that isn't really slumping. So this is a pretty stiff uh, mixture now. And what I did is this is a short little stipple brush I made. I just took some bristles. Uh, I took my brush, I mean, and I just cut the bristles down real short. And it's nice because it's stiff, 
And uh, I trimmed out a couple of the center bristles to try to give it a little bit more uh, ridge kind of pushing. That doesn't make any sense. I think it does. And uh, I don't think that's made a huge difference. But with this, what I have uh, been doing is by applying it not too thickly. Like that's a little too much there. No. It 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 needs to be at least to get the effect that I've been getting a a certain blend of the stiffness of the material and the layer thickness. And then as I drag the brush down it to smooth it, I am getting some nice little ridges in the bark that are holding their shape and aren't too aggressive in terms of um, pointy ridges, right? I don't want I don't want to have to come in and sand this or anything if I can help it, and I don't believe I will be since I'm pretty happy with the effect. Uh, and so if the material is too thin, you can't get really good ridges. If it's too thin, I find you don't get very deep textured ridges. It's also got a little bit of a timing issue so that if it starts to set up too much, it won't drag properly. And of course, it's a little thicker now and it's drying a little faster as a result. So it's sort of like you can't really play with it. You put it down, drag it, and stop. One of the nice things about this is that because it has because it has that ridge texture, it is uh, going over you know dried areas without leaving an overlap line, which is helpful. Just to give you a little bit of a look of the texture that I've been achieving. This is the branch I'm working on right now. I think I would like to have a different way of doing bark so that I could get maybe slightly larger ridges. It's tricky because the material, if it's too thick, it will try to self-level a little bit, even as stiff as it is now. So there's some kind of balance in there. And I guess this is where the, this is where a little practice and a little trial and error and a little bit of the artistic eye as towards what you want for your final texture. And one of the things with doing bark, though, is... The scale of the tree, you know, plays a, a role in how much the bark would actually show. So here's a 28 millimeter model. Right. So if he's six feet uh, or so, this tree would be, uh, I don't know, 12, 18, maybe 20, maybe 25 feet tall. Seeing that, that level of texture, if the tree doesn't have really pronounced bark texture, then you're not going to have a very, very strong bark texture in your model because of the scale.
one thing I should mention as well is that keeping your brush clean is helpful. By the way, this brush sitting in this cup like this, never do this with any brush you care about. This brush, since I've been working with the bark, has splayed out quite a bit at the end. Uh, so I'm not super concerned. That's kind of a, a weak brush, but don't ever, don't ever let a brush you care about sit in a cup of water like this. Terrible for your brush. Keeping your bristles clean is pretty important for getting that texture because individual bristles will drag through the drag through the goop and leave ridges and so as your brush gets uh, as material starts to dry on it uh, it's pretty key to take a moment and just give it a quick a quick clean and another tip that i've noticed using this technique is that you can't drag your brush quickly over the material or it will um, kind of create a stringy bridge over the low areas. I had another thought actually while I was working on it and it occurred to me that after the first layer of the bark mixture to cover the wire, Sometimes, you know, even if the armature was constructed in a better method than my used, uh, you may still still see uh, wires underneath the bark. But it might be a significant time saver to go to the texturing stage because the material is thicker, and so you're likely to cover up some of that and if you needed to go over an area again because the wire wrapping is still showing uh you know you'd have to go over it again anyway so and actually when i started when i added the plaster to the mixture to thicken it, uh, it occurred to me that that is what I should be using to bulk up those areas since it's not really prone to sagging. And I did do a little bit at the base of the trunk with this heavier bodied material. And uh, yeah, that made, that made that process a lot faster too. So there's that. I do think one other uh, thing I would like to explore in my next tree is making a brush that has more gaps between the bristles so that it will encourage ridges a little bit more uh, strongly wondered also whether this brush might be a little small for this process and i think actually it's a pretty good size uh, working around some of the smaller branches it you just you need a smaller brush of course you could could have two but in fact um the type of brush you use makes a difference as well. Uh, this is a natural hair bristle, probably hog's hair or something like that. Uh, and while I no longer buy brushes that are animal-based hair, I uh, happen to have this one, and, and its stiff bristles work pretty well for this. Uh, but if you have a stiff nylon, bristle brush and you cut it down significantly you you'll end up with a, a decent stipple brush as well so you can see here see i've applied it i've applied it too thickly and it's starting to uh, settle a little bit 
And so that's why really thin layers are important. But if it's settling, that means it's wet enough, you can probably work with it. Certainly, if you were going to walk away from it, you're like, oh, I'm done with this, and come back, and major areas have settled and gotten kind of smooth again. Surprisingly and reassuringly, this material comes out of the brushes in water uh, quite easily, actually. And you might not expect that, uh, considering there's plaster in it and a fair amount of plaster at that. All right, well, I've decided I am not going to try for a fluted trunk. Um, I have spent enough time with this tree, <laughs> and uh, my next tree, I will experiment more. And one of the other things, right, I'm always talking about, you can hide a lot of things. I had somebody tell me uh, that 50% of carpentry is hiding your mistakes. <laughs> And uh, I think there's something to be said about that for terrain as well. I am declaring the bark stage of the tree, the barking stage of the tree, done. And I would rate my happiness with it. I would give it a grade of C plus based on my goals and some of the uh and some areas that seem like they're not quite right i think it's often helpful to step away from something and come back to it 24 hours later you know see like there's a little couple problems in here but the foliage will hide some of that but it's often very helpful to step away for a little bit and come back the next day and take a look at it with fresh eyes. You will get a better sense of it as a whole piece and also probably see some things that you might want to fix um, that you didn't notice while you were working on it at the moment. So officially, I'm going to call this done. And I'm going to keep the bark mixture covered in case tomorrow I come back and I'm just like, oh, I just want to fix this one spot. There it is. Looking forward to sitting down and painting this and getting some foliage on it, which will be the next series. Having finished the bark, I'm not going back to it. I feel like now, having gone through this process, that I could construct the armature and apply the bark to this tree in less than a fifth of the time it took me and come out with tremendously better results. And some thoughts on using uh, a sculpting putty for the bark. And I have seen some people do this in the past. So my thoughts on it at this point is that I don't think it would be the best to use only a sculpting putty, green stuff or milliput or... Um, you know, Super Sculpey or something like that, because I think it's going to be really difficult to work with that on the thinner branches and to get uh, uniform coating and, and some other factors. But I do think that it should be used in certain applications. And I mentioned them along the way in the video. And the way I think about it probably best would be to use it as a step in the process. Apply the bark mixture little thicker than I did. Then find those areas where they need to be bulked up, need to be uh, shaped, use the uh, green stuff or milliput there, and then apply another layer of the bark mixture to uh, smooth all of that, uniformly blend it in, and then perhaps use a final coating around the trunk and some of the larger branches at the bases to um, uh, be able to apply some really nice bark texture. And which was something I really feel like I didn't get a very good result from. Uh, one thing that would need to happen would be to really be able to smooth the uh, edges of the sculpting putty of whatever it is uh, to help feather it into the rest of the tree texture. And maybe milliput would be a better use in this instance because you can, with a little water, you can spread it a little easier. And that's something you can't do with green stuff, for instance. So I do think a, a hybrid of the two 
would probably make the best results. And that's something I'm going to explore in the next tree that I try at some point. I do think it's interesting how I still didn't end up with a rounded canopy for the tree, despite making a conscious effort. Maybe there's a few things at play. Uh, I had a mental block. I just couldn't see it. Uh, maybe it was because the lower branches were so much larger that I just couldn't envision making the top as large. And ultimately, I think it's because I wasn't working from, from an image, from a real life example, because if I had that, I would uh, be focusing on individual limbs in its construction, and that would naturally guide me into creating the canopy that I had originally intended. So I think there's a little combination of factors at play there, but it's something I'm really going to be uh, probably hyper focused on for the next tree that I make. And I hope you learned a little bit by watching me learn. It doesn't matter who you are. When you try something new, there's going to be struggles, there's going to be mistakes. And I guess I want to leave you with one thought that don't let yourself get in the way of trying something new. Uh, it may not come out perfect. It probably won't. Uh, but uh, don't let that be a barrier to trying it. That's how learning happens by extending yourself uh, beyond the the comfort zone. In uh, education, we say we want to bring students to, I always raise my hand when I do this, to the zone of proximal development, right? here. Here's where you know, and here's where I want you to be, but I can't get you there that fast. So we're going to we're going to aim for a little above, right? We're going to make a small bridge and then another bridge and then another bridge. And so that is the way to view your own work and your own art, right? You're going to push yourself a little bit, try something new, and if it doesn't work out, that's okay. That was a big learning experience and you can apply it to the next project that you work on. And don't let yourself get in the way of becoming a patron. Uh when you become a patron and you pledge in any amount, whatever's comfortable for you. It's a huge motivator for me to keep making videos and to keep the channel going. And it gives you access to tons of stuff that I don't put up on YouTube. Uh, I do uh, maybe quick product reviews, things I discover on the web, mini videos that show you what's going on behind the scenes, uh, special project updates, um, all of that stuff and, and a lot more. And trust me when I say your pledge makes a really big difference. So when that icon comes up over here, definitely click it and go over and uh, check out what I have to offer on Patreon and uh, become a patron to help keep this channel going. So what's next? What's next is going to be the uh, Sharabang and the engine designing that I've been doing and the construction on it. As I mentioned, when I ran out of hard space, hard space, when I ran out of hard drive space, I... Um, had already begun some construction on it and I've been really enjoying it. And it's a whole different kind of activity for me in terms of the kinds of things that I've been doing over the years. So I think you're going to be very excited to see it. And I know I'm excited to show it to you. And that's why you know that I will be back soon with another Terrence Gapes video.